Hello everyone, so welcome to my studio, welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new or just stumbling across this video, my name is Robin McClendon and I'm a mixed media artist. We do a lot of book arts over here, gel printing, um, collage, all those good things. So welcome. Um, for those of you who are hanging out with me regularly, please make sure you like the video and um, you know, all that good stuff. Today we are going to do some more mask making. Um, we're going to work with larger, the, the medium sized pieces. So last week we were doing larger pieces. This week we're going to do some medium sized um, pieces and I'll sort of show you what I do with that. And we'll have fun on the table um, getting rid of our collections. Boy, if you're like me, and I think many of you are because we talked last week so much paper but a lot of good stuff right so you don't want to just throw it away but we do need to use it so today we're also going to um while i'm working just some i have things on my mind about cocooning and hibernation and it's like this time of the year um, and it's a perfect time for us to mass make and do a little pre um spring cleaning and clearing out right and, doing, and do it during a time where we just want to be relaxed. At least I do. And I'm feeling you guys are probably a lot like me. So let's go down to the table and get started on our project this week. Let's talk about cocooning, hibernating. I've been thinking about this as I was working this week in my studio and preparing videos and actually thinking about you all and this Saturday's video and you know we've been mass making and why mass making you know I love mass making it's something so cathartic and just so peaceful about you know moving through the studio and pulling pieces together and uh, making piles of different ephemera and mark making pieces and gel prints and things that I'd made over the year. And looking differently at these pieces and realizing that I want to use them. And it's not always a project, you know, just ready to explore and use these elements right and at the same time we know that we have to start gathering them up and doing things with them because they just pile up and so mask making is one of those things that i find i can sit down and just do and not have to put a lot of extra thought into it they happen very instinctively and very intuitively um, and that makes it easy. And I think it's also liberating that it's not going into any particular art project at that point that I'm creating it. You know, it's just the opportunity for me to look at these bits and pieces anew and just create with them. So this week we're working with our medium sized pieces in our mass making. Um, one of the things I find that I do when I am clearing out my studio and just, you know, organizing is I start with the large pieces, all of my largest pieces of paper. Um, and then I kind of work on all the medium and then all those little small bits. And so when I do mass making, I find I try to approach it that way. I try to get as many of the large pieces all organized and arranged in such a way that they can work into projects. They can be book pages. They're large pieces for collaging. Um, you know, like they're these ready to go pages for um, journals and my jelly junkadories and things like that. Then you have all these medium sized pieces. And I find that those work nicely as we're doing this week into sort of medium sized collages so that, you know, it's like all these ready made, um, pieces that can actually be put right on a page, um, can be starting places for a larger collage or can be collaged on top of when I'm working on a specific project, when I want to add specific elements. So they're ideal. And then 
what's left are all the smallest pieces and then they go into another type of project. So this is how I approach it. And so it's like, which brings me to nesting, to cocooning. And we're in the winter months, we're in January. And January is classically the time that we're thinking about starting a new year and New Year's resolutions and our goals and what we wanna try to accomplish in this year and all that stuff. And at the same time, where, you know, for me, the external world around me is saying, make plans, prepare, you know, start goals. <laughs> Every part of me is like, I don't want to. I just want to cocoon. I want to nest. I want to hibernate. I don't want to, you know, kind of go into the space of these big lofty um, goals and dreams. And... You know, it's just, we have to go with that natural rhythm. You know, the the world is set up one way, but I don't always feel that that way that it's set up sort of goes with my own internal vibes, my own circadian rhythm, you know? So coming out of, you know, the holidays and, you know, the time we spent with family and what have you, it seems so short. That week or two just is never enough. So when January hits, I very seldom feel like I'm ready just to um, start all these new goals and begin over. You know, I was born in this in the month of April. And so the new year very much feels like April for me. Like I feel that the spring months are the time that I really start kind of getting a lot of inspirational energy and I'm really ready to kind of come out of my little cocoon, you know, come out of my period of hibernating and really begin in earnest. So I think in a lot of ways we get to kind of go along, you know, go along with how we feel and um, sort of consider our own body clock, our own rhythm. So if you feel a lot like me, that right now you're still feeling like, I wanna hibernate a little bit. I want to work, I want to, you know, enjoy what I do. But at the same time, I'm not ready just to rush out into the world and begin, you know, um, a lot of goal setting and, you know, just, you know, being on, you know, so to speak. And I think about that because I know in this month's um, zine that I publish monthly, I talk about goal setting and, you know, the top three reasons that people don't achieve their goals is lack of motivation, setting unrealistic goals, and not acknowledging, um, the work that they do, you know, the, when they do accomplish something, they don't really stop and take note of it or keep track of it. And so thinking about that, you know, it's so true. Um, I think sometimes January, February, we just come out in this sort of superficial, you know, let's make goals. Let's figure out what we want to do in 2023. And it's kind of half-hearted. It's, you know, it's not always considered um, to the fullest. And so I think as a result of that, that also leads to us not really meeting our goals in that particular year that we're thinking about it. But I think if, you know, we take the slower approach and I'm very much task oriented, I'm very much a goal setter and I like reaching milestones. So this is coming from a person that really enjoys that process. I find that in order for it to work for me, I really have to go into a space of being contemplative, like really thinking about what I want to do and then sort of feeling it and <clears throat> taking time to think about all the ways that I might want to accomplish it or all the different ways that that goal could show up over the next 12 months. And so I don't look at these first couple of months in the year as sort of 
a loss of time. I really think of it as the planning and the preparing stage is just as important. So sort of self-care, you know, getting your heart and your spirit in the right place where you really can isolate the things that you want to accomplish, the things that you do want to see happen. And when you really can consider it, not just sort of listing um, all these to-dos because you're asked, okay, what are your resolutions for, you know, the year and all this kind of stuff. And we sort of feel like, you know, we have to answer these questions. Really, you know, creating a list and looking at it. And while we're in our studios doing this type of cocooning type of activities, the mask making, um, organizing, you know, putting, you know, going through all of last year's work and making piles of them, looking at the books and the journals that we made in the previous year and really allowing that work to inspire us, like really look at it and consider the decisions and the choices that we made in our artwork the year before. And, you know, will we make similar ones? Do we want to make different ones? How do we want to expand on some of these ideas? And then as you do that, really then allowing that to feed back into what you see for that current year. So for 2023, it's very much a continuation because our, you know, our life is one continuous stream. It's broken into these time blocks called months, you know, days, minutes, you know, ultimately years. But really, if we didn't have any of those type of timekeeping devices, time would just roll one minute into the next. And aside from looking at external environmental things like the sun going up and coming down, the moon rising, the seasons changing, we really wouldn't see them in these really more micro blocks of time, like days or months. I think we would see them more in the macro sort of clumps of times that, you know, classify a season or, um, you know, with weather changes, you know, the, the temperature changes would indicate um, also a change in a flow. But I think that we pretty much would sort of assess time periods a little differently. You know, like we looked at the, you know, the past chunk of time, we may look at it as the time that it took us to do a particular journal, right? And then looking at that journal and seeing all that went into it and thinking about all the new ideas that have come from it, you know, we may look at the value of moving forward and the goals we're making moving forward based on this past chunk of time called this is the time period it took me to make my journal, you know, this art journal that I worked on and this junk journal or a book that I created or a painting or a series of paintings that I did, right? And I think that's a more holistic way of looking at when we move forward, the things that we want to do. And so during that period of time of contemplation, that's sort of like a resting period, right? It's sort of a period where we are, you know, just taking a deep breath and we're assessing. And a lot of times that can just be something that's going on in our mind. We're not necessarily talking to other people about it. You know, we may have friends or someone close to us that we may periodically share our thoughts or even ask them questions about a similar time period for them and how they were assessing it. But I think it's a much more natural in the flow type of thing. And so then when we move on to say, okay, now I want to accomplish thus and so, it's not so many, it's not so much these goals or these resolutions that we've made. And so now the clock is ticking and we're off running for a 12 month period. It's just, we're off and running for whatever period of time that we feel it'll take to do that sort of thing. And I think without the pressure of the clock ticking and resolutions that we've written down or looking at us and other people we may have told things are reminding us when you're gonna get started on, you know, 
learning Latin or something like that. And you think, oh my God, I haven't done anything in months and I should, and the time is almost up, you know, all this kind of stuff. We would, without that pressure, we would assess things like, you know, no, I haven't learned, you know, I don't know if, what, what you know, how long it's going to take me to learn Latin, but I tell you, you know, I do learn a couple of words a week or, you know, I learn the, um, the grammar structure, you know, I take one a week and, and sort of learn it. And I've been memorizing that. And so I feel like I'm making some progress on it, but you know, I don't really know when I'll have it completed, but I feel good because I'm doing, you know, I've kind of tasked myself to do a little bit each week. So that's that part of the number three in, you know, and it's not necessarily one, two, and three. It's just how I numbered them for the article that I wrote. But, you know, keeping track of the things that we are accomplishing. And so that's like number three. Okay, no, I haven't learned Latin yet, but every week I do thus and so. And so I'm adding to my knowledge of it. And, you know, at some point I'm sure I'll be proficient, but right now I am feeling pretty good about the fact that I do a little something every week. And so just kind of want to share my thinking with you all, because I know, you know, we're alike in so many ways. And I'm sure, you know, you all are sitting thinking about a lot of the same things that I think about. And I think it's good to sort of share these things and kind of get them out of our own heads and then see how others respond to that or you know does this make sense to you is this some of the things that you think about how do you manage um the goals that you set or the things that you want to see for yourself happen and so you know this time that i spend in the studio doing these kind of processes and you know the kind of thing that we've been sharing in this month as we build um, towards creating this really cool book structure that we can use all year long, you know, as a journal um, to keep track of a lot of projects in. I think it's important to give ourselves this space, you know, like just allow ourselves to um, just relax in the moments and to enjoy hibernating <laughs> let's just enjoy you know sort of nesting in our studios and relaxing and not feeling that we have to you know have any big revelations or any big projects accomplished and I think approaching it like this, I know for myself, I get so much more done. I find that when I do um, create goals and projects and things that I'm doing, it normally takes me, when I look at my rhythm, and I've thought back on this, it normally takes me like towards the end of February to really lock in what it is that I'm going to be doing for the rest of the year around projects. And so for those of you who are over in Patreon with me and you've been with me for a few years, think back to that. You know, I'll start January off. I don't always come right in saying what we're going to do for the year. A lot of times I'll loosely talk about these are some of the things I like to see happen. And we get started on things, but mostly we're doing studio cleanup journals. We do mass making. We create another book structure. So it's normally, you know, end of February, beginning of March that we really start feeling these things and kind of hit the ground running. And I find also that I'll have goals and things that I want to do and I'll start the year off with them and then they'll kind of morph into something a little different. So I don't look at that as not being on track or not reaching a goal. You know, I give myself that grace for things to transition and change a little bit and sort of like, you know, 
the whole idea of the caterpillar and the butterfly, you know, allow things to bloom and, you know, morph into something else that was unexpected. And a lot of times when it becomes this something else that was unexpected, it's amazing how, how really cool that is and how you get something that you never even imagined was on the trajectory of where you were going. I really love that. So there's this idea of having some freedom in there and not being quite so tight. Um, I find that that really works for me as well. So even like with all of these um, collages that we're working on right now, I had an envelope, one of those plastic envelopes, and it was full of all these bits and stuff. And I went through, and some of the bigger pieces that I wanted to stay large, I took out and I put it in the, uh, the envelope that's laying there to my left. And, and then everything else I dumped out on the desk. So what we have here is what's left. And I am committed by the time this session is over, all of those pieces are going to be gone, you know? And all the little, the tiny pieces that are left that really doesn't have anything on them, you know, I'm throwing them away. So that by the time I'm done, that envelope is completely cleared out. Now, how many envelopes do I have like this? <laughs> I probably have another seven or eight envelopes just like this. But that's one done, right? That's one done. And it's all these collage pages now that I have that I truly will work and use because in having done this in the past, I love going to these pages and pulling them up, putting them down in a book page or on a collage and then continuing to work from them. So it really is kind of like this time when we're thinking about hibernating or the idea of cocooning or, you know, putting, it's like putting seeds, you know, the dormant seeds in soil um, where they can rest and wait for the times to change, you know, the weather to change, you know, the rains to come. And then these, these ideas as seeds begin to grow, right? And so I think that this mass making is very much like that for me. It's like putting all this stuff in soil, you know? And then as I continue to work, it's all there for me. You know, I can go to this envelope now that's full of all of these pieces that are maybe 50 or 60 percent done and then build upon them and then turn them into something completely different than what they were if you just look at this pile they'd be so dismissed but a part of me also has a hard time just taking and throwing all this stuff in the trash you know like maybe some people would look at this and think well you know it's a bunch of scraps who needs it thrown away but i don't look at them like that i feel like one of the things I do find myself thinking is how can I make less, you know, how can I make less scraps? And I think that's something to think about. And that goes back to the style of the art that I'm creating or the way I'm creating it. But when I make them, all these pieces are precious. And so I want to be in the space of being able to use them and be in the space of sort of honoring all of this and you all know that have been following me recently in recent months, you know, I really am exploring the post-consumer materials um, and turning them into, you know, viable art. And so all of this is post, you know, sort of post waste here, like it's post art waste. And so I feel it'd be a bit hypocritical of me to just take and throw it away too, because how is it any different than a lot of the other post-consumer waste that's all around us that I want to have a response to in a way that um, I can create art with it, right? So those are just some of the things I was thinking about, and I wanted to share them with you. Um, and I'll find myself probably doing a lot more of this because I'm always thinking about all kinds of things on every topic. And a lot of you guys ask me um, some of these more, you know, uh, contemplative things or more spiritually based questions. And I want to share more of that with you all this year. So 
here we're sitting here mask making together and see I mean I'm kind of like taking the last of these piles and looking at them and saying okay I'm gonna get all this done um, but I want you know hopefully this talk will inspire you just to take the extra time with yourself and go easy on yourself and take this time to hibernate and you know just snuggle up and nest and you know enjoy your time in your studios and your time with your art and really look at creating plans and goals for the coming months that really are in alignment with your heart and with your spirit because this is like one of the most amazing ways to be in the space of self-care and self-love for those of you that have been on the radical love journey with me the path of the heart you'll know what i'm talking about um this idea of self-care can look so much more differently than what the world sort of tells us you know our options are you know of course we know lighting the candles and doing the massages and you know taking you know taking our walks and things like that but for us as artists and and in, in this community doing these kind of things that we love you know mask making is self-care <laughs> it's that time that we can just play with all of our pieces and enjoy them and you know just be in our happy spot and i tell you gluing these little strips on a piece of paper and seeing the patterns that emerge and knowing that I'm going to be able to use this in some other work in the future makes me really happy. And so I feel that's an aspect of loving on myself and being available um, for me. And the, 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 the fact that I have the opportunity to share this with you all in this amazing community is just a bonus. It's just really a bonus that... Um, we're able to come together like this. And so moving into 2023, I want to do more of this with you all. And I want us to have more of the opportunities to come together and just, you know, just have a lot of self-love, self-care, and really explore the path of our hearts in our artwork. So we're done. We have our stack of... Um paper's done and I have a cleared out envelope. I'm really happy about that because I've got a lot cleared out of this, this one. And so one of the things I like to do is of course put everything back in this envelope. And as I continue to work through the year on various journal projects, on book projects, on various collage projects it's so much easier to pull from these already with some sort of substrate going even if we cover stuff up you know there might be things on there that ultimately I don't want I'll just put something off over over top but it's so much easier to have them like this than to have like a folder full of the bits because it never seems to go as smoothly so also I hope you guys enjoyed our chat just, you know, I thought I wanted to share more with you all of what I think about day to day, week to week, you know, um, just how I challenge myself, how I deal with challenges, um, you know, like just good old conversation. So let me know what you think. Let me know um, some of the topics that you find yourself thinking about or you'd like us to chat about and see what I think on them or how I'm approaching them. I have some ideas for lots of things I want to talk about with you all and share and just more, you know, like of my week of the things that I'm, you know, confronted with the studio, with my business, life, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I have fun as always. Make sure you join us in Premiere. We're over there chatting away right now. I'm often asked that, but basically what you do is that once you subscribe to the channel, you'll be notified. I think you hit notify me. And when you do that, YouTube will send you notification when the premiere and when you hit it, it brings you into the chat. So for those of you who've asked me that, that's basically how you do it. Anyway, make sure to thumb up the video. Also, um, if you're new, hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit all. That way you get all the notifications. 
and let's just keep our journey going. All right, love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.